So now that we've completely went over from one end to the other, the replacement front axle for the old Chevy pickup truck, it is time to give the rear axle the same treatment. Now I don't expect this one to have water in it like the front axle did. These are a little harder to get rained in, but you never know. It could be completely packed full of sand, mud, and water. So who knows? We'll find out. Let's get it up and reliable. To loosen up the uh, uh, these ain't this, the knockouts ain't, ain't even out on this thing. So in order to get these tight drums off, we have to remove this knockout plug in order to access the brake adjuster inside of this uh, drum brake housing. And this axle has never had the knockout removed, so it has the factory steel plug in it. If they've been serviced at any at all in the past, they would have knocked that out already and put a rubber plug in its place. So we'll be the first to remove that knockout. Well, that knockout does not want to knock out. So instead of continuing to fight with that knockout plug, I just decided I would wedge these drums off it, you know, the best way possible. I'm not worried at all about damaging any of the hard wheel hardware or brake hardware by doing this, simply because, you know, it's old stuff. It'll probably be replaced anyway. And after I got this drum wedged off enough to where I could access the, the brake adjuster, I found that it was frozen solid and it wouldn't have done me any good to get that knockout plug anyway. I would be doing exactly what you're seeing me do now, no matter what. Knockout plug out or not. There we go. Yeah. So if anybody knows what this red stuff is, leave it in the comments. Some sort of primer or something. It's also on the front of the axle, which is actually covered uh, by the drum. So it was probably sprayed in there, whatever it is. Maybe something to keep all of this hardware from rusting. I don't know. I've never seen that before. But looks like all the hardware is in good shape other than the adjuster, which is rusted solid. The one part you don't want to rust solid. Um, other than the pads will have to be replaced and we'll probably replace the wheel cylinder as well because, I mean, I think it's probably a good idea on this one. Okay, looks clean so far. Uh-oh. No, it's no good. That's why you take them apart. Where teeth come from? Diff looks good. Had to come from the ring and pinion. What's 
going on. Another gear tooth. Yeah, the uh, the uh, pinions out of it. That's not good. Hmm. Let's inspect it a little farther, see what happened. I think that this thing drove probably okay like this. It just got damaged and maybe made a little noise that somebody didn't like and that's why it got swapped out. Uh, I don't think Scott, I mean, this. I don't think this had been uh, off uh, any time recent, although I don't know. Uh, the pinion or the the ring gear looks fine. I don't see anything wrong with it. All I see is some of the back teeth, which you'll get a shot of here before long. Some of the back teeth on the uh, on the pinion are uh, are broken, but none of them are completely broken off. So it never slipped or anything. It may have just made some noise. Um, it does have a unit. Uh, a limited slip differential in it, which is a good thing as long as that didn't wreck any of that stuff. Uh, the magnet done its job. It caught all but one gear tooth that was laying in the bottom. So, you know, who knows? There's some hammer marks, what looks like some hammer marks on the diff carrier. Um, so either somebody's been in there or, uh, you know, those gear teeth uh, did the damage. So I don't know. So after a little thought and uh, a more thorough inspection, I think I know where these marks come from, these damaged marks on this diff carrier. I think that uh, these are not hammer marks like I originally uh, suspected. One of these gear teeth broke off of the pinion that drives this gear and then it got carried around and caught in between the diff housing and the pinion up there and broke off couple more teeth and it just wedged in there and uh, you know danced around in this rear end it could cause a lot of havoc but luckily I really think that the only real damage here that I can see so far is some cosmetic damage to the diff carrier and the pinion gear a little bit of damage caught this uh, limited slip unit here one caught it there but other than that, that's all I see so far. Now this is gonna have to be tore down completely and inspected, but if you've never seen a limited slip differential, uh, this runs on a little little gear over here. And if you're spinning in the mud, you know, spinning slowly, nothing happens. But once the wheel speed gets up, this is a weight that flips out and locks this differential. Well, somewhat locks it, it, it is, a uh, got clutches in it, and uh, causes both wheels to spin. Let me see if I can turn this fast enough to make that engage. There it went on. See, it locks both wheels together. Neat setup. Hopefully it's still good. And some of you think bad luck only happens to you. Pretty universal. Eh, better get the proper tool or I'm going to break my ratchet. So hindsight 2020, what I would have done if I was a really smart guy is I would have pulled both of the diff covers off these axles and thoroughly inspected them before I done anything to either one of these. That way I knew I was starting with, you know, good, good stuff. But the idea was that these were low mile axles and I believe that they are. I don't think Scott knew anything about this being the gentleman that I bought these from, Scott. 
I don't think he knew anything about the issues that this thing had. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think the diff cover had been off of this at all. Uh, he had got these from a customer. He did a swap on them for some upgraded axles and took them in on trade. Got, I got them as low mile units. And, you know, it, it is what it is. I should have pulled the covers and checked them out. I did not. And Scott did not. He offered me a refund, which I refused. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to deal with it like, uh, like you do, right? So finding out that this rear end is bad really does slow down the progress a bit. It's definitely a, a speed bump, but my life has revolved around turning lemons into lemonade anyway. So we use it as a learning learning experience, even though it slows us down and increases the costs. It is what it is, and the best thing we can do is you know, just deal with it and move on. So tearing down an axle and tearing down a motor are a lot like each other, although an axle is much simpler in a lot of ways. Your main bearing caps and stuff need to go back in the same position and orientation that that they come out of, just like if you were tearing out or replacing a crankshaft, keeping track of your bearing caps, making sure that they go right back in the same position that they come from. Same idea with a rear end. If you don't put them back where they come from and in the same orientation, you're asking for trouble, so keep note of your parts and make sure they go back exactly the way that they come out. So there's the culprit. We've got what looks like four or five broken teeth there on the pinion. You can see how long they are supposed to be and how short these are. We can get a better view if we turn it up a little bit. That's what uh, done it. Are you rocking little Bobby to sleep? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. What are you doing? Getting yelled by Grandma? Hmm? So I pulled the ring gear off this differential carrier, did a quick inspection on it as good as I can without actually tearing this thing down. And as far as I can tell, the only thing that we're going to need to do so far to get this diff back up into shape is to change these two components here. And if you're wondering, this is a G80 GovLock is what they're called. They've been around. General Motors have used this differential for a very long time, long as I can remember. I've worked on a couple of them, but it's been years ago. And in fact, they may still use this in some models. I, I, I'm not for sure on that. But the components that I can see that are damaged are the swing weight here, which is regulates uh, at what RPM this differential can lock once it gets up to a certain speed. This weight swings out and stops this little paw from being able to lock the diff. Uh, engaged and it bent the shaft that the swing weights on took a good hit there 
and it also took a good hit up here. So I don't trust these two components. And I went online, did some searching, bought some factory GM replacements. And these are actually PMI or powdered metal injected parts. So this is powdered metal injected into a mold under heat and pressure and formed into these pretty complex shapes. So factory replacements. I gotta replace these two sleeves as well. Now it's been a very long time since I've worked on one of these. And the one that I worked on that I remember anyway, the way that I got these two sleeves out were by two holes here and you could just drive those out. Well, this one does not have holes. So I don't know how I'm gonna get those sleeves out, but we'll figure it out. We'll tear this thing down, do a more thorough inspection on it. But hopefully, other than some carrier bearings, right, ring and pinion, it'll get us back up into shape. So here's the two pressed in sleeves that need to be removed in order for me to slide these shafts out of here. Now, if I can't get these out, I'll just cut these shafts. And I wanna to try to avoid that though. Um, there's no way to push them out from this side. And you may think, well, why don't you just drill those holes out a little bigger and use a slide hammer. These are glass hard, already thought of that. So what I've got is just a piece of steel here that I cut a slot in. I can slide it right over that shaft and I'm hoping that I can either press on this to press this bushing out this way or um, you know maybe hammer. I don't know. I just want to try to get this out without damaging anything. So we'll see. I'm going to try this first. So this is definitely a cobbled up setup. But it's just not, there's just not a good place to press here. So we've got a couple of machinist jacks under the ledge here. We've got the little piece of steel, the quarter inch piece that forks over top of the bushing. Hopefully we'll push it out. A little uh, inch by inch square piece of steel there to help this from bending so much. I still think it's gonna, but we'll see. I'm gonna put a clamp right there and uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll work, probably not, but we'll try it. Oh, it worked. That is amazing to me that this cobbled up setup worked. There it goes. Wow. Yeah, that bushing is just slightly bent. And that shaft is more than slightly bent. There's our spring. Now we gotta get this one out. This piece here, just a piece of mild steel, and to come up with something a little more rigid than this. So a piece of slightly bigger A2. Hopefully that will work. There we go. Huh? 
the zip part. Something that uh, maybe gives me a clue. So I just pulled the yoke off of the end of the pinion there and I noticed there was a bunch of silicone, black silicone, around the nut that holds this to the pinion. And I've seen people do that on new assemblies to keep it from leaking gear oil through the splines and out the front of the case. But I don't think they did that factory. And that makes me suspicious. That makes me think that maybe um, just maybe this had uh, gotten loose, this nut had gotten loose, it had started leaking gear oil, somebody put some silicone on there, tightened it up, but because this had, could have gotten loose, if it shifted, you know, it would have made noise, it would have got the pinion and the ring out of the line, and potentially, I can pop out of there, and could have potentially made this shift enough to where it broke off the ends of these teeth because that's just odd to me that that is broken like that. Oh wow, check that out. A gear tooth uh, that got picked up, sorry for the uh, dehumidifier, that got picked up by the ring gear slinging oil. It slung it into this galley here. That's how the bearings from the pinion get oiled, that ring gear slings it in there and then it comes out of that bottom hole down there. And those bearings are shot uh, where they beat up all that metal goo over who knows how long. But yeah, you know, I don't know that that's the case, that maybe they did put that black goo on there from the factory, but I doubt it. I think that's possible that that could have happened. What do you guys think? So now that I've got the known damage components out of here, I want to pull this thing down a little farther, see if there's anything else that's suspect there that looks like it's damaged. Now, there's some great animations online that explain how this works if you look up G80 or Eaton G80 differential. So look that up if you want a little better explanation than what I can give on how this thing works. So I'm going to roll these spider gears out of here just like you would on any differential. Pull those out. I'm gonna pull the center block out of this thing. I'm gonna hold up on this part because I don't want it falling out. So there's our center block. I'm gonna pull out this top section of clutch packs. So just a bunch of friction discs. These are just uh, bushings that ride on the ends of those friction discs so they don't rub on the case. Now these discs do wear out and need replaced from time to time, but that's all that is. Just some friction discs that are uh, keyed to the spider gear there. Nothing amazing. Now the magic's on the other side. It's really the whole component and the way that it works together, but this is the most interesting piece right here. Pull it out. It's much like the other piece, this piece, our end bushings and our clutch pack, except for this piece has a wavy uh, gear on it. You can see it's kind of wavy because it's a cam gear, really. And the back of the spider gear is cammed to match this gear. And what happens, and the way that this thing locks these clutch plates up, is because of this governor here that is driven by this gear. And if it, if you get a differential wheel speed between one and the other, one spill, wheel is spinning in a mud puddle, this thing recognizes that and this spins, locks onto this weight and it stops this wavy gear from being able to spin with the rest of the wheels. And what that does is because those wheels still wanna spin, it twists this spider gear up on that cam and that in turn squeezes all these clutch plates together, causes a bunch of friction, which drives both wheels. And the way that it drives both wheels and not just this one 
is because this one's got clutch packs on it as well. And because this, when it rides up on that cam, it presses out as well, it pushes on this piece, which is in between these two, and it smashes these clutch plates at the same time. So it is an ingenious setup. It really is. I like the way that these are made. And, uh, you know, I don't see anything damaged here, but these will have to be tore down, cleaned up completely, and inspected. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm questioning whether I should use this thing at all, seeing as this uh, carrier has been hit like it has. I don't know. A lot to think about, really. So I stuck this thing back together real quick, just in the meantime, till I decide what I want to do moving forward uh, with this rear end. I don't know how confident I am with this carrier or this diff, to be honest, because these weren't known for being the best locking differentials out there. I mean, there's been millions of them out there that have been trouble free, but the people who really put them under any strenuous conditions like the off-roaders or the hot rod guys, they quickly find out that these don't hold up all that well. But I'm not a hot road guy, nor a heavy off-roader, so I don't know. In my situation, it may be perfectly fine. These worked both forward and reverse because of the way that it has a dual road or a dual action governor on it that will lock in either, either direction. So many times a locking differential would have saved me from having to get out of my truck and lock the hubs in uh, simply from a little bit of wheel slip from a mud puddle. So I love the idea. I just don't know if I love the idea of using this unit after what it's been through. I mean, you get the idea. I bought some parts, but I don't know that I'm going to use it. We'll see. We'll see what happens. That's it. This week was my... 41st birthday and it was my 19th wedding anniversary so the 18th was my birthday the 19th was my 19th wedding anniversary and then the 21st was my mother's 81st birthday which that's a busy week it's been a good week other than a few hiccups right but that's it i guess so thanks for watching thanks to my viewers patrons and subscribers anybody who's helped me out whatsoever much appreciated so that's it thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. Through the storm